Is it possible for people to develop osteoporosis in spite of the fact that they're taking ample amounts of calcium? Uh, for women my age, for example, we are at risk for osteoporosis. Isn't there a paradox there? Yes. People started taking calcium supplements, and I think that's well known. You get them everywhere, and even the medical doctor advised you take extra calcium. And drink your milk. And, and drink your milk. In the beginning, that was a very good advice. But what we see now is that taking calcium alone is not enough. Later on, there was some, some research going on, and actually mm -hmm. I think we are now all convinced, is that together with the calcium, we need vitamin D. Because vitamin D makes sure that you absorb the calcium, that you bring it to the bones, and that right. you have a good incorporation of your calcium in your bones. We're okay so far. <laughs> yes. However, we did a study in 2003, which was published, and we looked at uh, the bone loss in postmenopausal women. And we did that over a three years time period, because you need a long period, because bone is a very slowly developing uh, tissue. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we divided postmenopausal women into three groups. The first group received a placebo, the second group received a vitamin D plus calcium plus other minerals like zinc and magnesium, mm -hmm. and the third group received the calcium, the D, the zinc, the magnesium plus additional vitamin K. And we had a reason to do so because vitamin K and vitamin D are both fat soluble vitamins mm -hmm. that decreased absorbed in the elderly, so both are, let's say, a little bit deficient. Right. And vitamin D has also an effect on the protein, on the protein osteocalcin, which is this vitamin K dependent protein, and make sure that you lay your calcium in a good way in the bone. And if you increase the expression of this osteocalcin, you also need more vitamin K to activate it. So mm -hmm. that was the rationale behind our, our hypothesis. And we did that in a three years study. And we measured by DEXA just endpoints. We mm -hmm. measured the bone mineral density. Right. And what we saw is that, that postmenopausal women, not taking anything, so taking a placebo, they lost up to 5% of their bone in the femur hip. So if you don't take anything, you will lose a lot of bone at these particular places where you break your hip. Okay. If you take the calcium plus vitamin D supplement for three years, you saw an inhibition in bone loss in the first year. However, in the second and the third year, we saw that it followed the placebo. So actually, this, mm. this supplement does something, but is not optimum. All right. And then in the third group, and that was really a great achievement, we saw that the calcium D plus vitamin K ended up after three years with a 35% reduction of bone loss in the femur hip. So actually, what we're saying is don't take single supplements, standalones. Take it as a combination, calcium, vitamin D, and vitamin K. And then you put your calcium in the right place, and then you have the most optimum mm -hmm. treatment. And that's the K2 that you're referring to, right? Well, the first study was done with vitamin K1. But mm -hmm. We repeated that later on in a second study with K2, and actually that was even more beneficial. With the K2 and not the K1, we mm -hmm. saw not only a 35% reduction in bone mineral density, we found that the bone quality at that area didn't lose anything at all compared to the placebo. So in the placebo, we found again a 3% reduction of bone quality, whereas with the K2 supplement, we found nothing at all. So this was, became known as the calcium paradox? Yes. But we're not getting all the information, are we? We're not getting accurate information. No. It's kind of like a stab in the dark. Okay, take the calcium. Uh, well, thank you for that research, because that means a lot to many women, many people, and the elderly people. Thank you so much. You're welcome.